In this Tobacco University video, we're going to look at fascination with fasciation on a cannabis mother and clone plant. We're going to hear from Connor out from the greenhouse to show us one of the plants that is going through and cloning, as we can see in the picture here, uh, to see if we can perpetuate this fasciation trait. All right, well, first off, I should define this, and fasciation, if you're not aware, is really defined as development of elongated, flattened, and stems on a plant. We can clearly see that here compared to the normal. This can be also expressed in the flowers from the apical part of the, pl of the plant. We can see this one in comparison to the normal one. Dandelions can also have this, and we can see the normal dandelions in the background with this fasciation one here in the foreground. Now, is this good or bad, particularly related to cannabis? Well, typically it's not considered to be advantageous other than a unique ornamental characteristics. However, in cannabis, this uh, change in flower morphology can lead to some interest. And we can see all these plants exhibit uh, fasciation. Now the question is, you know, is this good or is this bad? Definitely uh, is looking very unique. So what are some potential causes uh, for this to get it kind of like the root cause is what this might occur? Well, this is typically the result of a genetic mutation of the meristematic region of the plant. Remember, meristematic region is the area of high cell division. This is evident by the elongated and flattened cells. And this is kind of what the top of the plant looks like right here. As seen in the example here, it's the apical meristem showing the change in this morphology, and it's really not shown on the side branches, and you'll see that in a moment with Connor out in the greenhouse. Since this occurrence is typically isolated, it could be pruned out if the grower decided, but in this case, the grower has attempted to clone it for uh, the future to see if this trait will continue. Now, does fasciation equal a super bud? You know, we're seeing this change in morphology in that apical meristem. Well, is that going to make a super bud? Well, the typically, uh, the apical bud, the top bud, uh, can initially look very impressive, but often the actual development is quite poor. So while it may look like it might be a super dense bud, sometimes uh, there is a lack of density. Due to the rarity, the, is the reason for the cloning is to simply increase the sample size to see if this, is, if this initial observation repeats itself. However, even if a good structured superbud was to develop, we have to keep in mind that the odds of botrytis would likely be much greater, so extra attention would have to be taken for this plant to ensure you're not uh, losing this uh, unique quality to a botrytis or a bud rot mold. So let's go out to Connor and see what he has to show us with the fasciation plant we've seen in the greenhouse. Hello everyone, once again, we are back here in the greenhouse. Um, we're here looking at our fasciated plants again, our mutations. Um, here we have one of our original fasciated plants. You can see it started down way down here. It started getting wide, started thinning out. And if you follow along up, you can see it only keeps getting wider. It's around two and a half inches, almost getting to three. And it actually up here it started to curl in on itself almost like a piece of celery. There's a, a, a crease that goes down the middle and that eventually follows all the way up to this new apical meristem growth. And this, this plant specifically has some of the most unique growth because there's no fasciation on any of the side branches coming out. Look at the difference between the thickness of that main stem and this branch. It's, it's absurd. <laughs> And once again, if you look up to the top near the apical meristem, you can see how bushy it's really getting compared to a normal standard growth. I'm a little nervous as it, as it starts to bud that we might be running into some humidity moisture issues with this large mass of growth, but I'm going to watch it carefully and make sure to thin out any leaves that I need to. But it is just a beautiful work of nature. <laughs> and if you want a little comparison for size, that is a quarter sitting in the middle of the stem. It just looks crazy. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to what, what this plant comes to. Um, I'm hoping for a really unique kind of wide flower, nice big bud. But once again, I do have to worry about those moisture issues as it does <laughs> bush up some more. <laughs> Welcome back guys, we're here looking at um, our fasciated plants again. These mutations along the stem were so unique that I decided that I wanted to try to continue on the legacy. 
and well I did <laughs> um, here we have two clones these are a Bayox strain a high CBD variety and they were taken from this fasciated branch right here and if you look at these clones they have continued to fasciate these, they have these long wide stems that are really strong and dense you can see how thick it really is when you get those angles both clones are exhibiting this feature this one almost already like a half an inch wide when in reality it should only be millimeters thick <laughs> at this point and I'm really trying to keep these going and possibly get a whole bay of fasciated plants if possible I love this mutation and I can't wait to see what it does once it fully flowers <laughs>